Let's go to the thrift store. Hey folks, I realized it's been a while since I did a good thrift store video, uh, particularly because the, the thrift stores around here haven't been good for some time, but you know, they've actually been getting better. So I'm still healing up from my appendectomy a few weeks ago and I couldn't do a whole lot else right now. So I figured, eh, you know, let's go check them out. So this is the Salvation Army down in South Center in uh, Tequila, Washington, and it's not my favorite thrift store around here. They don't get a whole lot of electronics and a lot of it's pretty crappy, but what's strange is their collectibles case always has very weird, quirky things in it. Uh, I thought this Night Navigator might be one of those things, but it's just some kind of astronomy gadget, some kind of Starfinder or whatever. But check this out. So this thing, the TerraTech Synergy, I recognized it was a TV tuner right away, but I had to look it up and I found out that it only does DVB-T, which is the European standard for digital television, which means it doesn't work here and never will. And probably somebody brought it over figuring they'd be able to use it, only to find out that we didn't adopt the same standard as I, I think the entire rest of the world. And none of that is particularly remarkable. It's just that this is the sort of thing this particular Salvation Army would get. Not just an outdated, crappy USB 2 TV tuner, but one that doesn't work in this country. Moving on, we have a Mavica, and I think it's a FD73. I, I can't quite make it out. It's not one of the more remarkable ones. It's just remarkable that there's a Mavica here at all. I mean, they made millions of them, and the cool thing is this probably still works. I've never met one that didn't, uh, so somebody will come in and buy that and love it, I hope. And then there's this guy here. Now, I remember Flip being this uh, thing that happened very briefly in like the mid-2000s, right? So I was staring at this and I'm thinking, okay, it's an ancient flip camera, but C Cisco? Cisco was associated with flip? I don't remember that. And, and wait a minute, Ultra HD. Now I was under the impression that none of the flip cameras did better than like 480p, maybe 720p, certainly not UHD. Well, it turns out that, uh, yeah, Cisco bought them in like 2009 and uh, shortly thereafter closed them naturally. And that this use of Ultra HD refers to 1280 by 720. So, wow, I, I didn't remember that at all. And if you see one of these for $39.99, you're going to regret buying it. So moving on, we naturally have the big box of GoPro accessories. Every single time I go into this thrift store, they have a bunch of GoPro accessories. They're always different ones. I don't think the actual GoPro is in there. Maybe it is. I don't care. It's going to be like a Hero 4. Also, uh, the worst webcams you've ever seen. Those probably look like, uh, you know, flip phones from the early 2000s. And then we've got one of these, naturally. Uh, there's about 500 of these clogging up the shelves at every single thrift store in existence. Just your, your basic little portable uh, laptop-style DVD player. There must be hundreds of billions of these things in existence. Uh, but fortunately, this one supports all the standards. DVD, Dolby, JPEG. Now, there's usually not much upstairs, but uh, that is where they have the rest of the uh, quote unquote uh, homewares, housewares, household items and electronics. I'll tell you one thing about the Puget Sound region is if you don't have a TV and you're not too picky, uh, you can change that in a hot hurry because these places are all just overflowing with like 36 to, to 48 inch LCD televisions. Also, cable modems. My God, I don't think you can actually use any of the ones that wind up in the thrift stores. That one, I'm not even sure that's Doxus 3. But boy, howdy, do they ever have thousands of them. They also always have tons of speakers, which I can't even argue with. And some of them are actually pretty decent. Like this Altec Lansing set, this looks pretty decent. I couldn't get the grill off this thing, but uh, I'll bet the drivers are actually kind of sizable. It's got some weight to it. Nice looking subwoofer down there. You know, somebody will be happy with that. Certainly uh, happier than they will be with the Kobe that we got in front here. And for $8? Yeah, that's a steal. Check it out, everyone. It's the least useful device on the planet. And that's about it. Most of the thrift stores up here are just like this. Uh, like 90% of what they have in their electronic section is just tired old five disc CD changers, iPod docks, DVD players, stuff that like, I mean, even if you're broke, you could just buy something better for the same price. You know, why buy a DVD player? You can just buy a Blu-ray player. It's, <laughs> they're both 20 bucks. So I think most of this stuff just, just sits until it gets thrown away and they're just sort of keeping it out of habit. So let's go ahead and move on to the next place. You too. 
nothing too terribly exciting at the Salvation Army, but right across the street is the always more interesting Value Village. Now, whenever I go to this particular store, I actually go over and check the vinyl records. Now, I gave up on this a long, long, long time ago. When I started looking at these back in like 2007, you'd actually find stuff. And I really regret not getting a copy of Switched on Bach back then because they were really just thick on the ground. But nowadays, it's it's been uh, 10 years since I saw a single record anybody wants. It's just this completely forgettable 60s and 70s sludge and then Bob Dylan's greatest hits. Wow, a real record. It's not Herb Alpert. It's something someone might actually buy. And here's the wild thing. It's not ruined. I fully expected this to be cracked right just straight in two, but that actually looks playable. Can you believe this? Like, this is not the rarest record in existence, but, I mean, it's a record at all that's... It's not Herb Alpert. I swear to God, I've seen thousands of Herb Alpert records since I came up here. I am genuinely staggered. Like, I still can't really believe this happened. I mean, I didn't buy it, but still. Ugh. I, uh... I guess this is Star Wars now. Huh. Okay. So the electronic section at Value Village is not that much better than the others, except that unusually, compared to every other thrift store I'm aware of, they actually will put computers out on the floor. And sadly, there aren't any today, but I did come in here a couple times and they had like... Uh, three or four you know crappy hp computers on the shelf and one time they had a gamer rig in here they had like a gt 760 that was just sitting on the shelf and not only had nobody tried to steal the graphics card but nobody had stolen the ram which i didn't think was possible i mean it was ddr2 which has absolutely no value whatsoever but i've never seen a computer that the public had access to that had not had the ram stolen i didn't think it was physically possible so yeah that was wild so yeah sometimes there's just a thing and every single time that you see it you think i should like that i should be into that i should love this for some reason every time i look at one of these sony sports devices no matter what is cd player tape player radio whatever it is i want to love it i want to take it home with me i want for it to be important to me emotionally but i have to be honest the only part of this that touches my heart is that orange plastic Okay, so the thing you got to understand is that if you're shopping thrift stores in the Seattle area, you just have to filter out karaoke machines, okay? There are millions of them, and they're not fun. You're not going to love them. You want to be interested in them. The fact that this one says it's full HD and has a hard drive is unusual, but I know this is going to be absolutely deadly boring. There's nothing here. This is positively and completely Android? Uh, it's hard to imagine what Android could even refer to in this context, but sure, I'll take a look. So what do we got? Uh, we got our usual component. We got our composite output. We got coaxial and optical digital audio. And then we have score. Okay. I don't know what would come out of there. I also love the HD TV port. That's very good. Uh, naturally, we've got our SD, we got our built-in Wi-Fi, and then host port and extend device. Don't know what that's about. Mini post, that's good. And wait, co coin, coin control? Huh? You can hook up a, a coin acceptor to this thing? Service? Land? Yeah, this thing is meant to be built into like an arcade setup. You're supposed to build a, a karaoke bar around this. And it's only $35. Oh, that's that's coming home with me. New friend acquired. Now, much like the television situation, if you need a monitor up here, we're set to jet there too. Every thrift store is loaded to the gills with both 16 by nine and four by three displays. So you can often get stuff like uh, one of these nice Dells here. 
it's a great monitor for like retro computing applications. It does like 1280 by 1024, nice crisp bright display and not expensive either. You can tell from the price tag stuck directly to the panel. And all the thrift stores do this religiously. They always put the price tag on the screen itself. They never don't, even if there is a better place to put it. Like here, they could have put it on the on the speaker or on the side or something, but no, they always stick it to the panel. So after you get your $5 or $9 monitor and go home feeling like you got a real steal, you can destroy it trying to get the goddamn price tag off. And hey, it looks like they figured it out when it comes to the TVs. Nah, nah, they didn't. Dodge. So one great thing about Value Village is they've always got like crazy Kevin's wall of incredible values going on. All these bags contain just the wildest stuff you can imagine. For instance, there's a ton of like here bro, here's your controller type game pads like this Logitech one that I primaried back in like 2007. It sucked. I replaced it later with like a DualShock through a USB adapter and that was about 100 times better. Headsets also, they just have tons and tons of crappy headsets. Uh, Cordless phone base, probably without the phone, uh, Xbox 360 game pads. Oh, and then this guy here, this is a, a PC game port based game pad, almost all of which are just terrible. And this one looks like a lump of modeling clay. That D pad feels worse than it looks. And I kind of wish I'd bought it just so I can find out if all four face buttons and the shoulder buttons are all mapped to the same two buttons internally. They probably are. I also love the big uh, blank plastic thing here that looks like the Xbox controller jewel uh, with the logo on it, but probably does absolutely nothing. And if you're curious who makes it, this is a joypad. It's like a government issue thing. They, they hand it out to gamers in need. There's a couple of these Buffalo brand clone SNES uh, game pads for PCs, probably absolutely terrible. And uh, the best part is there's two of them, which makes me think that somebody actually played two player emulated SNES games on these. So it's sort of like a, a here bro, here's your controller situation, but where you're, you're giving bro the same controller you have. It's very equitable. Now, this appears to be an EA Sports branded here, bro, here's your controller. But the interesting thing is there's a PlayStation logo under there. So I guess this is licensed, but like the quality of the injection mold looks pretty bad. So I kind of regret not buying this just to find out if it's terrible. It's probably terrible. I'll be honest. I wish I had the time to go through every single one of these baggies because I know that there's some wild shit in there. Actually, hey, check this one out. This one is actually a bunch of DB9 to RJ45 adapters that you can repin manually. Someone's gonna be thrilled to find that at the thrift store and make a frugal purchase. I do not know what this is and I will not be checking. However, Eight Candles Trading Post is the best name for an e-commerce website, hands down. Now we're almost done here at the Value Village, but there's one more thing we got to look at, and that's the collectibles counter. So uh, often really interesting things here. Not really anything here today other than the one absolutely mandatory item that you'll see on any Seattle thrift store trip, and that's the uh, gigantic, overwrought, extremely expensive marijuana grow lamp. 69, bro. Now here's something your thrift store probably doesn't have. That's right, it's a self-checkout, so they can pay even less wages, because jobs change lives. Well, that's, that's goodwill, but still. It was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, usually the Value Village is the only thrift store I've ever been to that actually has computers on the shelf. And they're garbage, you know, they're, they're, they're always just total crap. Uh, I don't want them, but it is fun to see what they actually put out. Anyway, onward to the Goodwill, which will be worse. The Seattle area has better and worse Goodwills. The Tequila one is not one of the better Goodwills. Now, I say this one sucks, but I mean, truth be told, there's a lot of useful stuff here. Uh, you know, the heaters and fans and whatnot. Um, there's TVs, there's monitors, a lot of the same stuff as the other stores. Uh, just not usually anything too spicy. And as you can see, it's kind of a cluttered mess all the time. I don't know what that's about. 
Also, the speaker selection sucks. I keep coming in here looking for, for little, like, sets of computer speakers, but all they ever have is, like, mismatched stuff for some reason. Now, these little portable stereos, you know, it's not a boombox, it's a stereo, you see. I would love to love these things. I, I actually used to collect them until I realized I didn't have the space or the passion, and this one's in really nice condition. I'll bet the belts are bad, but you could probably replace them and have a, a perfectly nice little unit, or at least, well, it wouldn't be much worse than it was when it was new, anyway. I wish I could care, but I just can't. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's about right. So there's nothing notable about this at all, except I was staring at it, and I suddenly realized it says condenser mic, and there's two of them. And I realized, yeah, you know, this thing has a record button, right? So now you got to think about the idea of hitting record on your boom box and then just sitting back and talking into it. It seems like a, like a Martian thing to do. So this thing caught my eye and I just about lost it for a moment because it's a pinnacle device that I don't recognize. And man, isn't that colorway fascinating? Now, pinnacle made all sorts of like early desktop video editing hardware. So I was thinking this might be a breakout box for some real time video processor or whatever. I got real excited about it. And then I found out that it's a pinnacle bungee, which is nothing more than a basic consumer video capture card. And in fact, this one's so basic that I think all it has is a TV tuner and nothing else. So this ended up being tremendously disappointing. Do you remember when I said that you just can't get away from the karaoke machines? You will never go to a thrift store up here and not find a karaoke machine. It will never happen. The karaoke is forever. So that's just about it for this store. We're ready to move on, but hey, wait a minute. What are you doing over here in the aisle, buddy? You're curved. This might be the best modder in the store, right? Probably not though. Uh, let's see, $10, sold as is, no power cord. All right, what kind of power cord does it take? 14 volts center pin. Yeah, good luck finding one of those if you don't already have one. And I looked it up and sure enough, it's just 1080. So nothing special, just not flat. And with that, we are ready to actually get out of here uh, cause I got one more place to go to that's gonna eat up quite a bit of time, but it's more likely to have something worth talking about. Okay, I'm here at the RePC, and I cannot begin to give a thorough tour of this place. It would take like eight hours. I mean, maybe someday I'll come here with a proper camera, and I'll spend eight hours here. Like four days, two hours a day, and just cover everything. But today is not that day. So let's go cherry pick a few things. So you got to understand, this store is my stomping ground. I've been coming here for over 10 years, and every time I come in, I see mostly the same stuff with a few deltas. So my brain just sort of automatically filters out all the stuff that was here the last time I was here. And that means there's probably a lot of stuff you'd like me to stop and look at, which just won't seem notable to me. And they have a lot of stuff. Like, uh, here we go. This is an organ with a floppy drive. If you want that, they got it. Uh, here we have a 70 inch 1080 uh, multi-touch touchscreen. So if you need something to spruce up the apartment this Christmas, you know, maybe stop in, pick that up. Okay, I have to admit that it, it actually bums me out that so much PC software has been preserved already because all the crap on this cart, all these programs, like mid-2000s games for Windows Live type stuff, I would love to be able to justify buying this stuff and like going through it on a stream or something like that, but it's all online already. Now, on the other hand, this stuff here, I'll, I'll bet some of this isn't archived, like Design CAD 3D Max. Hell yeah, and uh, Extensus Portfolio 8.5. I don't even know what some of this crap is. You wanna make videos like it's 2010? We got you covered, Cyberlink Power Director. You wanna edit your photos like it's 2005? We got you covered with Photoshop Elements. We got a, a Photo Draw 2000 from Microsoft. Never even heard of that. Office XP, the last version that was usable. A whole stack of Windows 7s. Turbo Floor Plan Home and Landscape Pro from the same people who made TurboCAD 3D. I'll bet that slaps. Then we got the Bruderbund Click Art, 8,500 elegant images for all your creative projects. Now, sadly, I can't use this legally. It's a review copy. Either that or it's an art intervention. You know, they, they replaced that kid's head. Maybe that was a, a decision. 
The Windows 95 core energy emanating off of this could kill a medieval peasant instantly. This is one of the programs of all time. Once again, if you'd like to make videos like our ancestors did, we got you covered. Stone knives and bearskins. Now I know we're all gawking at those boxed copies of Adobe CS4, but I'll bet your ass didn't even know there's more to Acrobat than the reader. In a pinch, I could be convinced to use Office 2007, but only in a pinch. At any moment, I could be convinced to use Perfect Greeting Card Maker. I do not believe any video has ever been edited with whatever this is. Oh, this bangs. Plugins for Adobe Photoshop, a boxed copy of Genuine Fractals and Mask Pro. Outstanding. Nitro PDF? I didn't even know that came in a box. Damn, there really is more to Acrobat than the... Uh, wait, that doesn't work. Now, the really good stuff is on top because that's where the big boxes are. I don't know what Microsoft picture it is, but apparently it was $10 at Sam's Club. Family Tree Maker, on the other hand, also from Bruderbund, apparently retailed for $70. And there's 10 CDs in there. <laughs> 10 CDs, no. Professor Franklin's instant photo effects. Man, why didn't I buy this? Right, because it, it's probably already, yeah, it's, it's archived. Of course it is. You people need to be less efficient about ripping CDs. Leave some for the rest of us. But boy, howdy, does this ever look like a program? Nobody's brave enough to make a program like this anymore. A program that brings your website from plain Jane to wow. You know, I gotta say, there's something really charming about the idea of owning an actual shrink-wrapped copy of big box Adobe CS2 Premium. There's just one problem. It's an upgrade. Every single time I come here, I see this on the shelf and I remember that it exists. A game named Jazz and Faust, possibly the weirdest name for any game in history. Also, I love that uh, although it, it, it appears to want to be a rich narrative experience, uh, the back just tells us about things like multiple light sources providing real shadow effects. So you can tell this one's going to be a real banger. Let's just take a look at the IGN review here. A painful rating of 2.2, ugly, boring, terribly written, and acted out even worse. So yeah, maybe the, the technical stuff was, was really all they had to offer. Except the name. One thing RePC always has in abundance is speakers, but some days they're more abundant than others. These things are absolutely wacky. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know if they're trying to do like a Bose thing, something like that. They've got, you know, decent sized drivers in the front, like those uh, 70s tower speakers that all of us have had at some point. Can't remember if BSR is a name or not. Uh, but then they've got, uh, yeah, just uh, more speakers on top. Maybe they could do Dolby Atmos. Oh, and check this out. The roll foam might be gone on this, but uh, the cone itself, look at that, it's translucent. I, I don't know shit about speakers. Maybe that's very normal, but uh, to, to me, it, it looks quite exotic. Wonder if those are any good. Now, sadly, their CRT display is not up and running today, and they don't actually have that good a selection at the moment. It really depends who's working at the moment, whether they, they have a good variety or not. The other store has a bunch of 70s and 80s, like, color portable sets at the moment that uh, I would dearly love to own if I had the space. Now, if they did have some like that, then you'd also be able to pick up this beautiful little TV cart to put it on. You can imagine putting your, your NES and your Genesis in the middle there, then all your games and controllers down below. It's just an adorable little guy. And speaking of adorable little guys, check out this little guy. A little DLP projector from Dell. And that is not a DVI connector. That's a, a weird thing called Visa plug-in display, which I think only showed up on projectors. It's like a DVI 2, and you don't have any cables for it. So good luck ever plugging this thing in. It's okay, it probably only does VGA resolution anyway. And if small's not your thing, don't worry. We've got big, too at the exact same resolution. This is the only store left in existence where you can go in and actually find a remote for your TV or VCR or DVD player or whatever. Oh, these things, these, these are audio mixers, which doesn't seem possible because there's no ins or outs, but that thing on the left is Anet. It's a proprietary ethernet sort of kind of digital audio standard, which is like 64 channels of audio over ethernet cable. I don't know if these do the mixing or if they just remotely control a central mixer. Interesting stuff. I've always been uh, curious about investigating that sort of thing. Not that I really have any use for it. 
Now, both stores have multiple ADAT decks that have been sitting there for years, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't be able to throw these out either. They're so fascinating in concept. It's a VHS deck, except it records multi-channel audio. And yeah, what's not to love other than the fact that nobody wants to record on tape anymore? I mean, unless it's analog, right? This isn't even analog. What's the point? Now, these bins are great. I go through them every time I come here. These are just all sorts of converters and adapters. So like this guy here, this pushes component video and dual channel audio over Cat5 cable, probably several hundred to several thousand feet. It's useful if you need something like that. I don't, but at least it's here. This is a breakout box for an M-Audio PCI sound card. And I didn't realize at first the card was actually in there. Uh, I guess if you had like a Pentium 2 or something and you wanted to add four channel studio sound to it, uh, well, they got your number. Sick of all those cusses on the TV? Don't worry. Your kids will never defeat this mother. These DV boxes are really convenient for getting video in and out of a computer. Now, there are better ways to capture standard definition video, but if you're trying to output it, pretty much the only solution that exists in the modern era, or, or almost ever really, is to just make VLC full screen and then put your you know VGA, HDMI, whatever, through a downscaler. And the results always look like shit. Not to mention, you've got to worry about like the mouse cursor getting into the picture and stuff like that. These will take 720 by 480 video and output it pixel perfect over component, composite, S video. It's really worth your time if you're doing any sort of output to like VHS or, or something like that. I guess this Grace Digital thing is some kind of internet radio device. I don't know what its capabilities are. I was looking at it, thinking about like the Dell audio receiver that I was uh, looking at a few videos ago. I was gonna Google it and see what its capabilities were. And uh, then I completely forgot about that because my phone ran out of space because I'm an idiot. Now this is not my first rodeo, so I know better than to go on a, a long shooting trip without emptying out my phone. And that's why I arrived here with eight gigs free, which I filled up pretty much instantly. And this led to a whole comedy of errors where I found a USB on the go adapter after like 20 minutes of searching. And then I couldn't find any USB three flash drives. Everything transferred at like 500 kilobytes per second. And I didn't want to be standing there for two hours just to, to move this footage off my phone. So I had to buy a 256 gig Hynix SSD and a USB to SATA adapter and stand there for like 15 minutes copying the footage off. So uh, if you've ever wondered what it takes to be a YouTuber, uh, well, apparently not a brain. Now this Dell here is a little spicy on the pricey. 400 bucks is a chunk, but you know, they gotta keep the lights on and these things are getting rarer, so I can't get too mad. That monitor, by the way, is like a 1280 by 1024 flat screen CRT. Pretty nice device. They always have a lot of nice CRTs here, actually. Uh, in fact, a while back, I bought one that can do 640 by 480 at 160 hertz. I didn't even know that existed. And then speaking of spicy pricey, this 386 is actually very reasonably priced. These things have become incredibly rare. People threw them all in the garbage. So most of them are like 300 plus. And this one's pretty clean and complete. So that's actually a decent deal. Okay, now I don't know from PA speakers, but my girlfriend tells me that Sirwin Vega is quite an interesting name. And these things are from space. I mean, check out what's behind the grill. This is all handmade, I think. Look at the metal caps on the cones. Those look like they're aftermarket. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, but they just look alien. This huge horn in the middle, the armature holding the, the dual tweeters up top. I mean, this is just unlike anything I've ever seen before. And it looks like it was built by hand. I mean, that's spray painted plywood. That's handmade fiberglass. This guy, this has a guy's name on the inside of it, okay? I'm really curious what these sound like. Every time I come in here, I'm disappointed that they don't have these things running all the time. I mean, I realize it would cost about $30 a minute in terms of wattage, but it would also make the place look like Incredible Universe, the only store that ever understood that buying electronics should be a memorable experience in itself. If you don't work in IT, it is really hard to explain just how many network switches are being thrown away at every second of every day. Also, just how uninteresting they are to everyone other than home labbers who don't need nearly this many ports anyway and are doing it just for the look. Equally incomprehensible is the speed at which businesses get rid of wireless access points. I swear they go through these things like garbage bags, and every time I come in here, there's at least 300 new ones. I wonder if anybody's even buying them. Most of them are probably locked to cloud services and can't be used anyway. Now this right here is one of the reasons I truly love this place because you can't get something like this anywhere else. This is not a network switch. This is a network hub. If you know, you know. 
Okay, now I've been coming in here for the last year and every time my eye somehow catches this box and I wonder just what in the hell this could be. So today I decided to find out. Whatever it is, uh, it's copyright 2011 and I've never heard of this company. So uh, presumably whatever the hell they were trying to do here didn't work out. And yeah, opening it doesn't really make it make any more sense. The box says the conference phone evolved. And if you've never worked in uh, corporate IT or telephony, then um, I'm not, well, <laughs> conference phones are kind of an ongoing joke. Uh, nobody cares about them. Uh, they're theoretically better and worse ones. Uh, the problem is that you're never going to get anyone to actually use them correctly, so it doesn't make any difference. Whatever they're doing here is some real big brain shit, though. I mean, I think that's a speaker like a wireless speaker that looks like a, a little charging dock for it. So you can like move it around on the table, I'm guessing. And it's got like a diverter on top to kind of spread the audio around. This appears to just be a phone handset. So like your conference phone's got a phone so you can phone while you phone sort of thing. And that goes in the square hole. And then these guys, I don't have the faintest idea. I mean, I think uh, they say like mute on them. I don't know if these are portable mics or what, but they go in the square hole. And there it is. This is the monolith that we've constructed. I'm not sure why. I'm not even sure what. It also has this thing here, and at a glance, I don't have the faintest idea what this does. I mean, I didn't really see any plugs on the base station to begin with. They must be hidden there somewhere, but like, those are audio jacks and a pair of USBs, not the faintest idea. So my investigation has revealed very little that I didn't know before. It is a conference phone, and it is reimagined. Of course, some people don't have a very good imagination. You remember back when Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 came out in like 2020 and you couldn't buy a flight yoke for like 18 months? And I mean any flight yoke, even the game port ones. People would spend like $300 on a flight yoke from 1992. Even these things were unobtainium. It was absurd. People were basically smoking the wood in their pipes for like a year there, and I'm glad that situation's more or less over. Although, I can't wait till FS 2024 comes out and it all happens again. I'm getting old, so I'm never going to be able to accept that the Xbox One is not a current era console that anybody wants. So, it's always going to look weird to just see a pile of them sitting out here. Just sitting. Nobody's buying them. I think this is an Xbox S, right? $145, is that... Competitive. I have no idea what these are worth. I don't want an expo and I've never looked at the prices, but $70 just doesn't feel right. And nobody's buying them. The Xbox 360s are, are actually probably selling better because they can actually do stuff people want to do. So it makes sense that they're only $20 less, but it's never gonna not feel weird. Here, bro. Here's your controller. Here, bro. Here's your... Okay, now that does not look like a very good joystick. Man, Gravis, why'd you make a joystick this crappy? Imagine if someone named themselves after a joystick company that only made crappy joysticks. How wild would that be? Imagine if that was the name someone chose to go by. Like, who would who would decide to name themselves after this specific shitty joystick? Only a dumbass. You know what? Actually, I was going to dig around in here and try and find some more jokes and gags, but uh, ain't nobody got time for that. The experienced thrifter knows to ignore the siren call of MCS. I think they were a Sears brand, something like that. As far as I know, it's all crap. And there's never any reason that you'd want any of it, but they always do just a little something. Just a little something that just drags your eyes over to them. You want to be interested in them, but you're not. Okay, now I almost walked by this Akai 8-track recorder, and the reason for that is that I don't need an 8-track recorder. Even though, for some reason, I've been thinking about buying one for like 10 years, I would never use it. I have absolutely no need or, or use or anything for one. This one's probably pretty good. I'll bet it sounds great once you clean it up, clean the heads, replace the belts, etc. But I just don't need one. What I do need in my life, though, is that elapsed time counter. Oh, boy. Every single device needs a circular meter on the front, okay? Find a reason. It's worth it. Now, I got to thinking that I had seen some blank 8-track tapes in here somewhere, and so I went over to take a peek uh, over here by the cards. This is a whole <laughs> section in itself that I don't have time to go through right now. I was certain that this box back here was blank 8-tracks, uh, but curiously, it ended up actually being blank nab carts. 
which is a more exotic specimen. It's like uh, eight track, but much higher quality and intended for broadcasters. And like in another life, I would have bought this whole box, but instead it's just an ironically disappointing find. I fumbled around some more and found some head cleaners, uh, which are enough to turn on the panel lamps, uh, which are surprisingly intact, although I think the program selector lights aren't. And you can hear the motor spinning in there, clearly not under any load. And given that I found rotted belt stuck to the inside of the tape slot, yeah, it obviously needs a belt replacement like I figured. So this will be somebody else's baby, not mine. All right, I've been ignoring these things for like six months, and maybe I should just put this to a referendum. I don't think there's anything worth covering here, but maybe you tell me. This is the Nivius Denali Edition Media Center and the matching edge unit, and basically the top machine here is just a normal PC. You can see it's got the Seasonic power supply. It runs Windows Vista, and then it's got uh, you know HDMI and component video out. It's got a TV tuner. It's got like an eight channel sound card. And as I understand it, this just pretty much runs Windows Vista and you put, you know, media on it. And it's it's like a, a Windows Media Center machine. Nothing particularly special there, except that it's in this big, heavy, presumably fanless chassis. However, the thing on the bottom, that's different. That's apparently an Xbox 360 that this company just bought off the shelf, gutted and put into a matching chassis. And that's it. It's just a 360. I did power this up and it's just a normal 360. Uh, it's just in this, you know, presumably, uh, well, it's not fanless, is it? So it's just in like a matching heatsink chassis for some reason. I don't know what that gets you. It weighs about 10 times more than a 360, and uh, you're just supposed to, to use it to play stuff off the Nivius Media Center, I guess. Should should I waste my time on this? No promises either way. I just noticed these. These are incredible. These are the Smart Buy... Outstanding quality, outstanding value, Lucky 7 color substrate CDRs. True color on reading side. Whatever the hell that means. These look amazing. And the, the data layer is probably flaking off all of them. Every time I come here, I look at the old motherboards table and there's sometimes just some wild stuff here. I just don't need any of it. But the thing I need the least is a single board computer. And that, of course, is, is why I, I really, really want one. This is an entire motherboard. I don't know if it's like a, a Pentium 3 or a K5 or, or something like that, but that's the whole thing. Video card, network card, drive controllers, etc. But this is the one I really want. The Pentium 4 hanging off a card just sends me, just absolutely just zeets me high key. It's ridiculous. The P4 is already ridiculous. If I were to build a machine out of this, it would be even worse than most P4 machines. And that's really saying something. I mean, look at the soldered on CMOS battery for Christ's sake. This thing would suck and it would cost too much. And I still very badly want it. Every time I think about somebody using a static strap, I remember how this place has been just throwing computer RAM into these like polypropylene buckets for 20, 30 years. And the failure rate is like close to nothing. You're probably fine. Now, this is the as is section, which is not to say the rest of the store isn't mostly as is. No, this is just the total chaos mode hellhole area. Here's a Spider 4 Elite for calibrating your monitor. Looks new in box. No idea what it's doing here. At least the price is nice. VHS rewinder. Alarm clock. Roomba. There is definitely a market for these items. Cheap Android 8.0 touchscreen point of sale system. These have been here for like a year. Eventually, these things will all sell. This is the last of my camcorder collection. I brought all my cameras here, dumped them on the shelf, put 10 bucks on each one. This is the only one left. For some reason, people bought several that were outright broken and said so. This one just says records won't play. You'd think somebody would have picked it up, but uh, yeah, the other cameras there are not mine. They belong to some other loser. Well, I guess they will belong to some other loser once someone buys them. Curiously, although the local thrift stores always have VCRs for sale, they're almost always bottom of the barrel garbage that's not worth buying, usually very old uh, or at least beat up and, and super low end. So it's nice that EPC often has decent quality decks that are actually worth buying. I'm not sure if any of these count. Use. Gun.
And at this point, I was pretty much pooped for the day. I hadn't found anything particularly interesting to buy at the RePC, which is a shame. It's really a crapshoot. Sometimes I come here and I, I leave with 30 things, and sometimes I can't find a single thing that really feels worth buying. So in the end, the only thing interesting enough to bring home was actually the karaoke machine, which is wild. Those are normally like brain poison. They're like a bellwether for a bad thrift store trip. You see one, you just go, eh, let's go home. We're not gonna find anything today. Uh, this thing was, you know, so uninteresting on its face. I figured I'd bring it home, just put a quick clip here at the end where I just turn it on and demonstrate that it's a karaoke machine and there's absolutely nothing noteworthy about it. But it ended up being so different from what I expected that I decided to make a separate video about it where I might actually get up to some pretty wacky shenanigans, depending on how far I can push the thing. So keep an eye out for that. I think that's going to be fun. And if you want to get a notification when I publish that video, then consider subscribing to my channel uh, and turning on notifications. And then there'll be like a 1% chance that YouTube will actually tell you when I publish that, if it's feeling like it that day. But if you really enjoyed this, then consider supporting me on Patreon like these people here are doing uh, because that's my sole source of income. Uh, it pays for my groceries and gas in my car and uh, stuff from Goodwill. I'm not sure how it happened that walking around in a thrift store for a couple hours and uh, talking shit on speakers can be a job, but for whatever it's worth, somehow that is my job. And it's thanks to all these incredibly generous people who are making that possible. So thank you all so much and to everyone else. Thanks for watching.